Welcome. Let's take a look at an introduction to the mean value theorem. The mean value theorem states, let f of x be a continuous function over the closed interval from a to b, meaning for all x values starting with a and ending with b, and differentiable over the open interval from a to b meaning all x values between a and b, not including a and not including b. Then there exists at least one c in that interval from a to b, not including a and not including b, such that f prime of c is equal to the quantity f of b minus f of a over the quantity b minus a. So let's take a look at what this is telling us. So looking at our graph over here on the right, we see a function that is nice and continuous and is differentiable as well. You can see that we have our x coordinate or x value a and b labeled on the x axis. Therefore, we could consider this left endpoint of the function to be a comma f at a, and this right endpoint of the function to be b comma f at b. Now, this line in the middle, this line segment in red, represents the secant line that connects the left endpoint of the function on the interval to the right endpoint of the function on the interval. And this uh, line and line segment has a slope, and we'll call it the slope of the secant line. Now, what is that slope? Well, let's find out. So the slope of the secant line will be the vertical change or change in y over the change in x. We have this vertical dotted line in green um, this vertical line represents our change in y. And this vertical line starts at f at a and goes up to f of b. So our change in y is f at b minus f at a as we move from left to right over our interval. So change in y is going to be f at b minus f at a. Now we need to consider our change in x. Notice that the horizontal line here that represents our change in x. And our x values start at a and end at b. So our change in x is going to be b minus a. So the mean value theorem tells us there is at least one c in between a and b such that the slope of the tangent line is equal to the slope of the secant line. You could also think of it as the tangent line to the curve is parallel to the secant line. And we can see that borne out here in our graph. There are two locations. There are two locations, C1 and C2, where the tangent line to the curve is parallel to the given secant line. So we can say then that F prime at C1 is equal to the quantity F of B minus F of A over the quantity b minus a, and that f prime at c2 is also equal to the quantity f of b minus f of a all over the quantity b minus a. So let's look at a quick example. We've got f of x is equal to x to the two-thirds on the interval from 0 to 1. First, we need to determine whether or not the mean value theorem can be applied. Then if so, find all the values C that are guaranteed by this theorem. So the first criteria that needs to be uh, satisfied by the mean value theorem 
is that f of x be continuous over the closed interval from 0 to 1. Now, this may be a function that you're not particularly feel familiar with its graph. It's not a polynomial, and so let's go ahead and take a quick look at the graph of this function. So here we have a graph of y equals x to the 2 thirds power. And you'll notice its behavior. It is um, decreasing uh, through negative x values as x increases till it hits the origin. And then from the origin, it starts increasing. So the question then is, is it continuous? And from this graph, we would say yes, that it is. It is continuous. And certainly it is continuous on the interval from 0 to 1, this interval here. And then the second question is, for the mean value theorem, is the function differentiable on the open interval from 0 to 1? That means we are not considering what happens at 0, nor are we considering what happens at 1. We are only interested in what happens between 0 and 1. And we notice that we have this cusp here, but this cusp occurs at 0. And 0 is not part of the open interval, it's part of the closed interval. So this function is differentiable on the open interval from 0 to 1. So we saw from our graph that we can to also determine that the function is differentiable on the interval from 0 to 1. It is not differentiable at 0, but because differentiability is all about the open interval, we can disregard that. So then, the conclusion tells us that there is at least one value c between 0 and 1, such that the slope of the tangent line is equal to the slope of the secant line connecting the two endpoints. Or we could also say that the slope of the tangent line is equal to the average rate of change over that interval. So let's go ahead and find f prime of x. f prime of x is going to be 2 thirds times x to the 2 thirds minus 1. 2 thirds minus 1 is negative 1 third. So this is equal to 2 over 3 times the cube root of x. Now, f prime at c has to equal f at b minus f at a over b minus a. So f at our right endpoint, f at 1, is 1 to the 2 thirds, so that is equal to 1. f at a, or f at our left endpoint, is 0 to the 2 thirds, so that is equal to 0. And so f prime of c is equal to 1 minus 0, f at 1 minus f at 0, all over b minus a. b minus a is 1 minus 0. So f prime at c should equal 1. So that means we have 2 over 3 times the cube root of c is equal to 1. Now let's multiply both sides of this equation by 3 times the cube root of c. And we end up with 2 equals 3 times the cube root of c. Now divide both sides of the equation by 3, and we end up with 2 thirds equals the cube root of c. So to find c, we need to cube both sides of this equation because the cube root and the cubing function are inverses and we end up with c equaling 2 thirds cubed. 2 cubed is 8, 3 cubed is 27. 
So we claim that C should be 8 over 27, and we claim that F prime at 8 over 27 is equal to 1. So we have a claim here that F prime at 8 over 27 is going to equal 1. That comes in right here. So let's go ahead and just verify it for ourselves. For ourselves, if I evaluate my derivative at 8 27 I have 2 over 3 times the cube root of 8 over 27. And the question is, does that equal 1? Well, uh, we have 2 over 3 times the cube root of 8 over 27. The cube root of 8 is 2, and the cube root of 27 is 3. So we'd have 2 over 3 times 2 thirds. Does that equal 1? Well, 3 times 2 thirds is 2, and so does 2 over 2 equal 1? And the answer to that question is yes. And there is one more thing we need to verify, and that is that the C that we found does in fact lie in the open interval from 0 to 1. As we were given in the original problem, the closed interval from 0 to 1. So the question is, is 8 27 an element of the open interval from 0 to 1? And the answer to that is yes. 8 over 27 is definitely larger than 0 and smaller than 1. So it lies in that interval, and 8 over 27 is the C that we are looking for. I hope you find this helpful.